This is my 1956 ES175. It's an old guitar. It's older than me. Yes, only by a bit. But it's been uh, with me for a long time, this guitar, and it's, it's just a beautiful piece of art. I bought it when I was a teenager. I think it was around about the mid 70s I bought it. I bought it from Gaslight Music, Daryl Miller. He had told me that Tommy Emmanuel owned it and swapped it for a couple of nylon string guitars because Tommy was getting into the nylon string. And so I bought it, I think I paid about $1,100 for it. I had to go into debt, got a loan, my parents went down to her and it's been with me ever since. It was the main guitar that I used for many years. I used it with Stevie Wright on his tour. We were touring the Evie album and that was this was the main guitar that I used back then. It's such a great guitar, honestly. The pickups are just, it's the best rock sounding guitar I've ever owned. The only problem is that it feeds back if you get loud, like all these guitars do. It's had very little done to it. In the 80s, I got a guy to refret it and he buggered it, butchered it. All the frets were just hanging over here. And I, you know, I, I'm so disappointed that for years it just stayed like that and until I took it to again Frank Grabisa who fixed it up and put new inlay in and it's been beautiful ever since. When I was studying for my jazz diploma at the conservatorium in the 86, this was the guitar I used most of the time because it was jazz, man, it was jazz. I love this guitar. I always have, I always will. Uh, I remember, remember once I was working with Jackie Orzarski. Jackie put a pop band together. It was a kind of a new wave pop band with Naomi Ayres, Jackie, uh, Mal Wakeford, and Cos Russell. And we were called the Alphabetics underneath a shop in Sussex Street in Chinatown. Actually, it was more towards Wynyard Way, so it was up the other end. There's a big hotel there now. But I was rehearsing with him. We used to rehearse down there all the time, and they were great songs, amazing songs. And I had to rush off to go and do a session in the afternoon. So in those days, you could park in Sussex Street <laughs> in the city at all hours, no parking meters or anything. And I remember getting out at my session and realizing that I'd left my guitar behind. I freaked because I knew it was either behind the car or on the footpath. Now, if it was behind the car, I'd driven over it and smashed it. Fortunately, after I bolted all the way back, there was nothing there. The guys had gone, and this was in the days of no mobile telephone. <laughs> so I managed to uh, survive the session and, and my paranoia, and eventually I got a phone call from Jackie that night saying that he had picked up the guitar because he'd seen it left in the street. <laughs> So I've had some lucky times. I've had some unlucky times, but I've had some really lucky times. But this is the guy that I will always keep. It's such a beautiful guitar. I think the pickups are original, but I can't be certain because I remember the guy that did the fret job. He's a well-known guy too. I'm not gonna mention names, but he's a dick. I don't know, I reckon he swapped one out. And I can't say for sure, and I don't know, but don't trust everyone that you think you can trust. I've changed the bridge and I've polished that up plenty. I used to even polish up the pickup covers, you know, wet and dry under the water. Tuners have been changed and they're working fine. The nuts are fine. Everything else, I still have the original pots that were only changed a couple of years ago by Les Rankin. So, but the pots that were in there originally are like massive, big, caked up with lime. This had a bit of a crack just on the neck joint there. So of course me, in my young age, thought that super glue would do the trick. <laughs> anyway, it hasn't moved since. It has a couple of loose bits like that. That's loose. It's just not, I'm just not gonna fix it. It has a character. I did have a block of wood made for underneath here. Because I was in the 70s and the 80s and I wanted more sustain. More sustain was more better. And so I thought by getting a block of wood, 
that would sit underneath there and it was made specifically for it would help with the sustain. It just didn't. It's a, it is what it is. It's a wooden guitar. It sounds amazing. So that's my 175. 1956 is still going strong. I love her and she loves me. And that's the way it's going to be for the rest of our lives. Mm. See ya. More guitars to come.